If PUBG wins, I'll fucking jump off a bridge. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator. Welcome to my video for the Steam Awards 2018. There's eight categories. Basically none of the games I nominated got into said categories, but I guess that's somewhat to be expected. My tastes are not as conventional for the most part as uh, a lot of people's. But let's uh, get over to that page real quick. Check this out. They got the animated fucking logo, whatever it is. Statuette bouncing up and down. We could also get some, some cards and all that good happy horse shit, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm not even too worried about the voting, to be honest, but I think it'd be an interesting thing to talk about. We've got eight categories, Game of the Year, VR Game of the Year, Labor of Love, Best Developer, Best Environment, Better with Friends, Best Alternate History, Most Fun with a Machine. So I think we're going to do from the bottom to the top, because it seems like that would be least important to most important. And they've got little videos and stuff to go along with it, so hopefully you guys can enjoy those clips, you know what I mean? So let's uh, go ahead, start this thing up. And here we are at most fun with the machine. Euro Truck Simulator is the first one up. My god. I I don't get it, personally. <laughs> That's not one that I would go for. But a lot of people seem to like it. These simulator games make a lot of money. Rocket League, really, really awesome fucking game. I spent a lot of time in this game. I've even done a couple episodes for it. So that is definitely a good pick. Nier Automa Automata. <laughs> Is a really, really awesome game as well. It won Game of the Year for a niche gamer last year. Um, so yeah, very, very nice one. Factorio, definitely the more indie title among these, but not a bad one at all. I definitely can see the appeal. Space Engineers has just been around for quite a while, expanding and expanding, and if you love space and mining asteroids and flying around creating ships, then Space Engineers is probably the one for you. Honestly, uh, my pick for this would be like the most normy one. I think it's the one that's actually going to win, <laughs> and that would be Rocket League. Factorio, definitely I would place in second place. Nier Automata would be the third place, then Space Engineers, and finally Euro Truck Simulator. It's not that I don't like Space Engineers, but yeah, this is... This is a bundle of good games, I will tell you that much. I don't generally get into the uh, cyborgs, mechs, robots kind of games very often. I'm more of a magic, spell-slinging, RPG, sword-swinging, wizardry sort of uh, player, but it's it's not bad overall. This is a, an interesting category. I think it's kind of just shoved in there to shove it in there, but definitely not the worst thing that I've ever seen uh, by far. <laughs> the worst category I've ever seen. I think my nomination for this category was Exotic Matter or something like that. It's basically uh, Minecraft in space, but, you know, there's a lot better choices out there. I just kind of crapped out a lot of my nominations, <laughs> to be honest. Exotic Matter is still a really good game, but probably not the most fun that I've had with a machine. That title would definitely go to Rocket League. So, let us vote for Rocket League and see what happens. You voted one time and earned one trading card. Excellent. Fantastic. I did vote for Rocket League. So, let's move it on to Best Alternate History. We've got Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. That is a very Netflixy game. A lot of cinematics going on, which I don't really like. We've got Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Which, uh, I really, really like the Assassin's Creed series, to be completely honest. This did get nominated in quite a few different categories, and for pretty good reason. Uh, Hearts of Iron 4. Really, really cool tactical giant uh, RPG sort of, yeah, strategy game. We got Civ 6, another strategy game, which I guess is a cool alternate history because you can make your own alternate history, right? Yeah, that's pretty sick. And then you got Fallout 4, which is, uh, it's Fallout 4. <laughs> I wasn't too impressed by Fallout 4, if you want me to be completely honest. Is the cool alternate history? Sure. Yes, it is. Um, in a way. <laughs> Nobody really wants a nuclear war. None of these really grip me, necessarily. Based solely on the title of the award alone, 
Uh, a lot of these games are just like, hey, what if the Nazis won? Hey, what if something different happened with the Nazis? Hey, what if we dropped a nuclear bomb, I guess, in the case of Fallout? Uh, but the most interesting one to me would probably be Civ 6, followed by Hearts of Iron. Uh, then we'll throw Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Wolfenstein 2, and Fallout 4, bringing up the rear. So, I really like Civ 6. I put a lot of time into Civ 5. Haven't put that much time into Civ 6, but it's definitely an interesting premise to create your own alternate history, of course. So, that basically is the reason that I would pick it. It's not my favorite game to play out of this lot, um, but it's definitely the one that offers the most interesting alternate history. Moving on from that, let's see what we got up next. Better with friends. The best multiplayer games that are better with friends. Payday 2? Yeah, of course. You don't want to play fucking Payday by yourself. That's just sad. And then we got Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight is fucking awesome, especially with friends running away from a killer in like a, yeah, an objective-based scenario and you gotta escape and all this stuff. It's pretty cool. Rainbow Six Siege? Uh, yeah. <laughs> all day, every day, I'm at that Rainbow Six Siege. I, I, I just can't stay away from it. Uh, CSGO, now free to play. Wow, huzzah. It's been out for a long time. People have been playing it for a long time. I guess it's better with friends, but you could definitely play it by yourself as well. And then we've got Overcooked 2, which is interesting because I believe Overcooked won uh, a game award this year. So, Overcooked 2, it's nice to see you, I suppose. <clears throat> uh, as far as casting my vote... Oh, shit. we got to cast our vote for alternate history. Alright, my bad. Yeah, it's Civ. <laughs> got it, got it. Alright. So, obviously, I'm going to vote for Rainbow Six Siege, Better With Friends. It is definitely more of a cooperative sort of game. Payday 2 would, would be uh, a close second, you know? Payday 2 is basically unplayable without friends, or at least uh, a pub group. Pug group. Pickup group, yeah. Uh, Dead by Daylight's really easy to play with just about anybody. Danger Zone, same. Overcooked has a really nice single-player mode, so you can play Rainbow Six Siege Pug as well. I guess Payday 2 would be the actual best choice uh, based on just the category, but I've got such a hard-on for Rainbow Six Siege that it's hard for me to say no to it, you know? CSGO, I'm really, really weirded out that it went free-to-play, <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's fine to play it without friends, you know? I've Jumped in. I think I've only played a total of like nine or ten hours of Counter-Strike, uh, but it's it's decent, you know. You can definitely do it without anybody at your back. But if you've got somebody at your back for Rainbow Six Siege, Payday 2, Dead by Daylight, then you're going to stand a much better chance of success. So obviously Rainbow Six Siege at the top, Payday 2 after that, then Dead by Daylight, then uh, I guess Danger Zone, CSGO Danger Zone. Why do they have the Danger Zone thing? I thought it was a new CSGO coming out, but it's 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 exactly the same. It's the one I own already. And then you've got Overcooked 2, which uh, has its own single player mode. You don't really need somebody to play it with you. But I assume it would be better with friends. All of these would be better with friends. But Rainbow Six Siege, the best with friends, of course. Alright, moving along. Best environment. Oh my. There are many good choices here. The Witcher Wild Hunt. Yes, The Witcher 3 is absolutely amazing. I do own this game. I have played it a little bit. I need to put more time into it, but it's just such a time sink. Same with Subnautica, honestly. Subnautica has a great underwater world for you to explore. Many different creatures and locations even. <clears throat> even if you just assume, hey, it's all underwater. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Absolutely fucking gorgeous. Just like every Tomb Raider you like running through a jungle, here it is. Far Cry 5. Yes, we played this on the channel. Good old time in Montana. Good lord, I've never seen the the, the wilderness look so beautiful. And then we have Dark Souls 3, which... It does have quite an environment to it, but it's not necessarily one that I personally would want to spend too much time in. It's sort of dark and brooding and edgy, but... um. Yeah, this is really a toss-up between the first four, you know. 
Personally, I would probably go for Far Cry 5 just because I like the woods. I like the expansive openness that it offers. Um, you know, the jungles of Tomb Raider are pretty cool. The underwater world of Subnautica is awesome as well. And then the, uh, the dark woods of The Witcher you can wander through. It's, these are all really, really great choices. I can't agree enough that these are amazing choices. I think I picked uh, Rend for Best Environment which has those wide, expansive spaces. More of a car cartoony feel than Far Cry 5, but I think it falls closest to Far Cry 5, so that is what I'm going to vote for. And I've earned four trading cards. Huzzah! Yay for me. Um, yeah. I guess I would put Far Cry 5 at the top, Witcher under that, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Subnautica, and finally Dark Souls 3. I really don't know why Dark Souls 3 is on the list. I, I guess people do enjoy that sort of um, dark, brooding environment. That's why people play things like Dark Souls and Bloodborne. But honestly, I prefer something that is a bit more breathtaking. You know what I mean? You wander around in Far Cry 5 and you're just like, holy shit, it's so fucking beautiful. Not to mention the fact that in Far Cry 5 you can get in a plane and really uh, it just inhale the landscape, you know, take it all in. It's an amazing, amazing game. We need to get back to that quite soon. But uh, there's just so many good games out there. Subnautica was also free from Epic Games uh, this week or last week. I guess it was last week. So hopefully you snag that for freezies. I've been waiting for Subnautica for free for a long time. And uh, finally it came. So we'll get to one of these games sooner or later. Most likely Far Cry 5, but The Witcher's waiting in the wings and so is Subnautica. Uh, I'm not such a Dark Souls player, and like like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I haven't uh, gotten into the Tomb Raider series. I do appreciate both of those series, Assassin's Creed and Tomb Raider, but um, I'm not an aficionado, as it were. Anyways, that's enough rambling about best environment. Really, really great choices. I love this category, but we must move on for now. Best Developer. Oh boy. So uh, we've got 10 choices for best developer. First one would be CD Projekt Red. They are the ones that made The Witcher. They made quite a few games actually. They're coming out with uh, Cyberpunk pretty soon. They, they make some awesome games, I will give them that. Ubisoft made Rainbow Six Siege, Far Cry 5. Uh, those are both games that I have a huge, huge heart on for, so it's hard to deny the appeal of Ubisoft. <laughs> Bethesda. They came out with Fallout 76 this year. I don't know how they they made it here, <laughs> to be completely honest. Rockstar, you know, they've got that Red Dead goodness going on right now. They got that GTA 5, which is just going to rake it in the bucks for them. Digital Extremes, I'm not extremely familiar with, but definitely uh, I'm seeing some good stuff on the screen, so maybe worth a try. Maybe I should research that a bit further. We've got Square Enix, which I've always been a fan of. Uh, they do a lot of Final Fantasy type stuff. Final Fantasy Tactics is really, really what brought me into Square Enix. Capcom, uh, yeah, they they do put out a lot of good stuff. Monster Hunter World and a bunch of fighting games, shit like that. Paradox Interactive, hmm, not the most conventional choice. One of the smaller companies on here, but they definitely make some nice uh, RTSs and stuff like that. Bandai Namco, yes, they've got that Dragon Ball Z goodness, that's m what I mostly know them from, but they've also done the uh, Dark Souls series and stuff like that. Clay Entertainment, they've made quite a few games that are on my wish list, but I haven't um, given them very much time. You know, I've played Don't Starve and Don't Starve Together very intermittently. But, um, yeah, aside from the art style, I wasn't too impressed by the gameplay itself. So, this is a, a really tough choice to make, I will say that. I lean towards Ubisoft because probably Ubisoft is the one that's going to win. <laughs> or Bethesda. I don't know why there's so many fucking fans of Bethesda out there. But, um, CD Projekt Red is probably the one that I feel the most comfortable voting for. Or Square Enix, but... Maybe even Bandai Namco. Man, it's so hard when they when they increase it to ten choices. God, it's it's much harder this way. 
Capcom, of course, I have some, like, old-school affinity with, but I haven't played much of their stuff this year. Then again, they did put out that Monster Hunter World, boy. Monster Hunter World, how you gonna say no to that? Rockstar Games, I'm not extremely impressed by, uh, mostly because I haven't gotten to play the new Red Dead because I'm PC only, so maybe once that gets a PC port, we'll be like, okay, <laughs> got it, but... Right now, Rockstar for me mostly means GTA V, which, eh, not impressed, to be completely honest. Oh, it's just so hard. Capcom, Square Enix, CD Projekt Red, uh, Bandai, Paradox is pretty nice as well. I think I'm going to vote for Capcom. No, I'm going to vote for CD Projekt Red. Ah, so rough. So rough. Well, it's not a life-changing choice. <laughs> Nobody's gonna know what I voted for anyways unless they watch this video. Which, uh, most people won't, so... See the Project Red? I think it's the right choice. I think it's the right choice. God damn. I, I still think Bethesda's a waste of a slot, you know? They've made a lot of good games in the past, but... Boy, did they drop the ball this year with Fallout 76. <laughs> that is just a mess. Uh, I predicted the entire time that it was going to be a mess, and what do you know, that shit came to fruition hard. Anyways, we'll move on from Best Developer to the 2018 Labor of Love. I nominated Project Zomboid for this category. We've got Grand Theft Auto V. Oh, Rockstar Game, like we previously mentioned. It's definitely had a lot of work done to it, but mostly because it's a cash cow. It's not a Labor of Love. No Man's Sky... Definitely released, disappointingly, but now most of the things that were promised before it was released have been delivered upon. Yeah, it, it's been a labor of love, I do think. Uh, Path of Exile Betrayal. Mmm, I have not played, but it looks fucking cool. Dota 2, ugh. Get this, get this out of my face. Every dude that I meet in the Philippines is like, do you play Dota? I'm like, eh, not really, dude. <laughs> Stardew Valley, yes, they had their multiplayer update released this year and it is exactly as delicious as it sounds what a cozy game stardew valley uh yeah right up there with gta 5 as one of my most played games so i think since project zomboid is not on here that stardew valley is what i would like to vote for and there it is vote submitted um after that i guess it would be no man's sky gta 5 path of exile and dota 2 like I said, I haven't played Path of Exile, but I really dislike Dota 2, so that is the explaining for the uh, the bottom rankings there. <laughs> Stardew Valley is just such a feel-good game, you know, and obviously a lot of work has gone into it, so big, big ups to Chucklefish and... was it? Confused Ape? Something like that? Concerned Ape. Fuck, I was so close. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, uh, I, I really don't think Grand Theft Auto V is a labor of love. That's why I place it below No Man's Sky. Grand Theft Auto V is just a fucking cash cow for Rockstar. They milk it and milk it every single year. They keep getting me to reinstall it by offering me free money, and so uh, I do. Because I'm a sucker, but also because it's a pretty fucking fun game to play. No Man's Sky, pretty awesome as well. I'm really glad they were able to deliver on all the things that they said they were going to deliver on. It would have been a major, major game, much, much bigger than it was if it was able to meet all of those things upon its release, but that doesn't seem to be how things happen these days. <laughs> you put the game out, and then you patch the fuck out of it. That's that's how it goes, so I can't be mad. It's just sort of the state of the gaming industry as far as I'm concerned, but yeah. Definitely uh, some decent choices here. Really wish Project Zomboid would have been in there because they released vehicles this year. They they got a whole lot of shit done. Redid like the entire viewing system for Project Zomboid. And it's just a game that's really coming together. So we'll get back to Project Zomboid relatively soon. We should probably get back to Stardew Valley as well. Uh, I was streaming that a little bit with Nico. And that was nice. So we should, we should hit it a little bit more. Anyways... We're going to move on from that, see what the next category E is. We got VR Game of the Year. Oh, boy. I'm not big on VR. I don't have a VR. First one we got up is Skyrim, of course. Of course we do. 
because Skyrim has been released on anything and everything. We've got VR chat, which is not really a game, is it? <laughs> it's more like a chat. It's more like Ready Player One, the movie, put into a, a game version. Beat Saber? Hmm. How are you going to say no to fucking Beat Saber, dude? That That is an amazing game. That is one of the reasons that I really want to buy a VR. You got Fallout 4 VR. Thank you again, Bethesda. Once again, I'm not so impressed by uh, Fallout 4 as a series, but probably as a VR game, it's pretty cool. And then Super Hot. I've loved Super Hot for the longest time. It's just an amazing game. You go all slow-mo, and then you start moving, and everything moves a little faster, and you stop, and then everything slows down again. That's just a really cool game. Uh, I'd like to play Super Hot VR for sure. And it's especially meta because it's actually about, like, a VR system that puts you into people's heads, and it's, yeah, <laughs> got a really interesting story to go with the actual VR-ness. So, I guess, if I have to pick, it's pretty obvious that it's going to be Beat Saber, isn't it? <laughs> I fucking love it. It's It just looks like an amazing game. It has propelled VR forward as a genre. I don't think many people were hopeful about VR until this year rolled around, and VR has been kicked up quite a bit this year with Skyrim and Fallout releases. VR chat, of course, the Ugandan Knuckles meme popping out of everywhere. And uh, Super Hot VR I was actually unaware of, but it looks fucking awesome. I definitely hope that I can get a VR next year. Maybe, maybe birthday, something like that. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, Beat Saber is definitely the thing that makes me want to get a VR most of all. So that is my number one choice. Second choice would be Super Hot VR. Fucking looks amazing. <laughs> I literally didn't know about it until just now, but now I really want it because I played Super Hot the game. And it's uh, it, it makes me come buckets, is all I'll say. After that, you got a toss-up, really. I guess VR chat goes at the bottom because it's at least like a game. So we got... Beat Saber, Super Hot VR, Skyrim, Fallout 4, VR Chat. Um, basically, the tie between Fallout and Skyrim is just which one do you like more? Do you like a more uh, tech based post apocalyptic world or a more fantasy based one? And I definitely like the more fantasy based. So, some pretty decent choices here. You know, I'd really like to see. Uh, a lineup that is absolutely amazing, comprised entirely of original games. Right now, most of these games are like, oh, there's three of them you can get on another platform, or were released on another platform, and just kind of ported to VR. So, once VR really gets into the swing, we will see original titles for VR only, and that is when I will definitely have to buckle down and buy uh, a headset or whatever. But for now, we're safe, don't worry. <laughs> We can wait on Beat Saber for just a little while. Alright, we move on to the big enchilada. Here it comes, the game of the year. PUBG? Are you kidding me? I don't understand why that's on there at all. I mean, I guess it did kind of push the Battle Royale genre forward. A lot of people seem to like it, but I ain't one of those people, <laughs> if you want me to be completely honest. Monster Hunter World? Now that's something I can get behind. That looks sexy as fuck, and uh... Yeah, I've seen quite a few people play it, and it looks like something I'd enjoy a heck of a lot. Kingdom Come Deliverance, probably the most indie sort of thing that we have up here for Game of the Year, but it's really, really awesome game. Uh, Hitman 2, of course the Hitman series is just fucking amazing. I really, really love it. Um, I need to buy Hitman 2, but I have all the other Hitmans, so... And then you got Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which I mentioned earlier was nominated for quite a few things. Best Environment, I think it was. No, that was Best Alternate Timeline, or some shit like that. <laughs> but yeah, it definitely deserves to be up here for Game of the Year. Assassin's Creed Odyssey has really, really pushed some things forward um, with that series. Like I said, not a huge fan of Assassin's Creed, but I can appreciate what they're doing. So, I'm really, really having a tough time to pick between four of these. PUBG, you're you're number five. You're the fucking last last in the group. I'm gonna let you know that right now. But these other other titles are just yeah. How the fuck are you supposed to pick? You know, 
Monster Hunter world, you got this giant, giant ass world, hunting down these fucking huge monsters using different strategies. It's such a deep game, such an amazing game. Kingdom Come Deliverance, much, much smaller scale, but much, much richer story, you know. And it also has, uh, you know, the stat systems come into play quite, quite differently through your dialogue options and stuff like that. It's also made by an indie studio, which I'm really partial towards, you know. I'd like to see an indie studio win. So, I think I am going to vote for Kingdom Come Deliverance, just because I am loyal to Warhorse Studios. So, there it is. Uh, Hitman 2, God, it's fucking amazing! Assassin's Creed Odyssey, ah. alright, I... PUBG's at the bottom, Assassin's Creed Odyssey I hesitate to put at number 4. I really wish I could put it at like number 3, and then Kingdom Come Deliverance is number 0, but I don't know if that's... then what's gonna be in the number 4 slot. My nomination is gonna be in the number 4 slot. And so you might ask me, Dayton, what was your nomination for Game of the Year this year? It was Slime Rancher. <laughs> yeah, you guys didn't know that I ranch slimes, did you? But I really, really enjoy that game. <sighs> really, there's just so many good games. It's super hard to make a call, but these are the calls that we've made. Kingdom Come Deliverance for Game of the Year. I really, really hope that wins. I actually think that probably Monster Hunter World is going to win. If PUBG wins, I'll fucking jump off a bridge. Uh, Beat Saber is what I voted for here. I also think that that is going to win VR Game of the Year. Labor of Love, I voted for Stardew Valley. I think... I think GTA 5 is going to win. Maybe No Man's Sky, but probably GTA 5. I, I don't really keep my ear to the ground on how invested people are in different games. It's kind of like, I do what I want to do, like I've always done with my channel. But anyways, yeah, my, my money's on GTA 5 there. Best Developer? I voted for CD Projekt Red. If Bethesda wins, I'll shit my pants. It's probably going to be Capcom or Ubisoft. I lean towards Capcom just because they did have uh, bigger releases this year. I, I heard more thunderous applause around their releases than Ubisoft, but Ubisoft definitely, definitely put their A-game out there. So did Bandai Namco. Really, all of them here did, except for Bethesda. <laughs> so it's, it's hard to make the call, but uh, yeah. I voted for CD Projekt Red. I hope they win. I actually think Capcom's gonna win, perhaps Ubisoft, though. Best Environment, I voted for Far Cry 5. I really hope that it wins. Shadow of the Tomb Raider probably has a bit more appeal, I think, to the general gaming public as far as environment goes, so I think that could be our big winner. And uh, maybe Dark Souls, because there's a lot of thunder behind Dark Souls. The fan base is very fervent. But I hope that Shadow of the Tomb Raider wins if, Dark, if uh, Far Cry 3... Far Cry 5 doesn't. Did I say Far Cry 3? What the fuck? I played a lot of Far Cry 3, but right now I'm playing Far Cry 5, and it's awesome. Better with friends, Rainbow Six Siege, all day, every day. Uh, Payday 2 doesn't probably stand a chance, neither does Dead by Daylight. CSGO has a really big fan base behind it, so I'd say if Rainbow Six Siege doesn't win, it's probably going to be CS CSGO. Overcooked 2 seems like it's really out of place in this lineup. Um, so yeah, my my money's on CSGO or Rainbow Six Siege for that. Best Alternate History. Um, this is kind of a... Kind of a toss-up category. I mean, they're all sort of samey in their way, you know. There are slight differences, but in the end, yeah, I, I, I don't think there's too much alternate history. Alternate options in the alternate history. <laughs> um... If Civ 6 doesn't win, which honestly I don't think it will, I really only voted for it to vote for it, it's going to be Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I, I would put all of my money on Assassin's Creed Odyssey for this. Um, yeah, I know the one I voted for is probably not going to win, I just did it because it's an alternate history that you can create, which is the best part. But yeah, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is definitely going to take that one home. Most fun with a machine, I voted for Rocket League. It's a very normie choice. I think that is going to be the winner, honestly. If that's not the winner, then Nier Automata will be definitely. I mean, I don't know how big the Euro Truck Simulator fan base is, 
the people that do get into those simulator games seem to get really into it, especially because they have like $3,000 worth of DLC and shit like that. So, I don't know. I could be extremely, extremely surprised here, but I think that Rocket League is the most likely to win. I wish Factorio or something would win, but it just, it's a bit too indie, you know? The majority of audiences are looking for something with, you know, Ultra HD, Advanced High Def Graphics, or something like that. So, I think that Rocket League's going to take that one home. Anyways, that is it for the Steam Awards, for this year at least. It was a pretty fun thing to look at. Not a whole lot of what I nominated got through. I didn't even remember a whole lot of what I nominated. I guess next year I should try and game the system a little bit more and be like, this is what I think is going to win, so I should vote for this and give it a chance to get in there. Or maybe they just fucking pick names out of a hat or don't give a shit what people say, but I don't know. I assume, I assume some people did vote for this stuff, so I really hope Kingdom Come Deliverance wins Game of the Year. That would be... A fucking awesome thing to end the year with so especially after all the backlash you know they're like oh you you need to do this with your game Warhol Studios like no we're, we're gonna do what we want and yeah their their game was a rousing success because they didn't bend to the, uh, the PC crowd that was trying to come after them who really wouldn't have ended up probably buying the game in the first place like they say get woke go broke and uh, that ain't never gonna happen to me, Saga. So, <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. If you have watched this far, let me know what you think in the comments. It's definitely a really, really interesting topic, so we can get into it at length if you would like. <sighs> and I guess, I guess, I guess we'll just have to wait around. I might do a reaction to the results. I might just tweet about it. Might just make a little status, something like that. But yeah, thank you guys once again for watching. This has been the Steam Awards 2018. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Please don't forget to like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy the episode. That is always, always appreciated. We've also got links in the description to Twitter, Discord, Patreon. Uh, also some other stuff, but those are the three that you can find me on the most often. Big shout out to MMX Akira and Nico the Legend for supporting us on Patreon currently. And I will see you folks in the next one, whatever that might be. So until then, friends... Bye bye. One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye. See you again. Goodbye, goodbye. See you, my friends.